one of the biggest mistakes that's uh, that so many so many stepmoms are making is believing that the reason they feel unappreciated the reason they feel invisible the reason they don't feel like they belong is because other people are unable to see how worthy they are that other people are unable to see how valuable they are where would you take your life if you knew you could not fail i get it as a stepmom mom and entrepreneur Sometimes it can feel like what everyone else expects of you versus what you dream about for yourself are on opposite ends of the spectrum. As a woman, you're taught from a very young age what society thinks you're worth based on how you look, how you behave, and how much money you're allowed to bring in. But I'm here to show you that you can be the woman who has it all and not just on the outside. I'm Brittany Lynch, and you are the queen of your castle. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the queen of your castle podcast. I am your host, Brittany Lynch, and I hope that you are taking really good care of yourself. Before we get started today, I just wanted to take a quick second to thank you for taking the time to tune in to today's episode. Your time is the most valuable resource that you have, and I truly and deeply honor and appreciate every single second of it. And I hope that you honor yourself and thank yourself for investing in your well-being, investing in your stepmother well-being here today. Now, if you are listening to this episode and you are a stepmom, then get ready because I'm about to drop some truth bombs about probably the top three, if not number one, hardest things for stepmoms. And I mean, if I could really narrow it down to the question that I get asked the most, it would probably be some variation of this one. So, so, so many stepmoms have asked me, Brittany, why do I feel so unappreciated as a stepmom? Brittany, why do I continue to feel invisible? Even though I've done all of these things for all of these people, it's like they wouldn't even notice if I left. When the kids come for visitation, I feel like a nobody. I don't feel like anyone ever chooses me. And so if this sounds familiar to you, if you're a stepmom and you find yourself giving and giving and giving to your partner and your partner's kids, maybe even to your partner's ex, maybe to your in-laws, but you don't feel appreciated and you don't feel like your love and your efforts are being reciprocated, then I want you to pay really close attention to this episode. If you're not driving, then grab a notebook and a pen and take some notes because I'm going to give you some strategies at the end. I'm going to run you through my steps process that I use uh, so that you can start to feel the love and the acceptance in your home that you deserve to feel. So here it is. If you are a stepmom who's a giver, meaning that you've taken it upon yourself to do everything from scheduling the kids' doctor's appointments to always being the one buying groceries and cooking meals and cleaning the house and helping the kids with homework. But the more that you give the more resentful that you end up feeling. Or maybe you're the giving stepmom who contributes pretty significantly to the finances of your household and your partner and your partner's kids are supported by your income but have never said thank you, maybe even acknowledged this. You know, maybe their sense of entitlement drives you up the wall. 
or maybe you're the giving type of stepmom who goes out of her way to plan a bunch of family activities for everyone, you know, trips out of town or scavenger hunts or crafts or making homemade heart-shaped pizzas, but nobody seems to want to join in, right? Maybe you're like someone I know who has become a very dear friend, thanks to Step Queen, uh, who went, she told me one time that she went out of her way to take her yoga teacher training for kids so that she could teach yoga to her stepdaughters. But I'm sure if you're listening to this episode, I'm sure this comes as no surprise to you. Um, so even though my my friend had invested all of this time and energy into learning how to teach kids yoga and had really good intentions that it would be a bonding activity for her and her stepdaughters, guess what? Her stepdaughters wanted nothing to do with it. So if you're a stepmom who has ever thought some variation of I give and I give and I give, I give and I give and I give to my partner, and my partner's kids, but nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to notice me. Nobody seems to notice what I'm doing for them. And if you think the answer to that problem is just to keep giving and giving and giving even more of yourself in the hopes that someday they'll realize how lucky they are, like just magically wake up and be like, oh, wow, she's done so much for us. I'm really glad that you're listening to this episode because I've seen this over and over and over again. So many women are making this deadly mistake. It's a deadly mistake of continuing to give more, try harder, push harder, push more, in order to make everyone else happy. And ultimately, the motive under that, more often than not, is to make everyone else love them back, right? To make everyone else prove that they love stepmom back. But this, my friend, is backwards. Not to mention, it's a one-way train one-way ticket, one-way train to burnout and resentment and anger and jealousy. And maybe when push comes to shove, eventually divorce or separation will become the only way out. A lot of these stepmoms paint themselves into a proverbial corner. Right? So let's take a look at this. Okay, Let's really pull this apart. Why do stepmoms generally feel so unappreciated even though they do so much? We do so much. Us stepmoms, we do a lot. Why is it that stepmom's partner and her stepkids and maybe even their mom seems so incapable of recognizing all of the time and energy that we spend trying to make life amazing for everyone else. And most importantly, what the heck can you do about it? So before we get into that, I we're going to come back to that in just a second. Before we get into that, I want to tell you a story. And I've told this story before, so some of you may remember it. Uh, but it's a story about Christmas time. It's a story about a really hard lesson that I learned about trying to find appreciation, trying to prove to people that they should appreciate me. So once upon a time, once upon a time, a long, long time ago, when I was a new stepmom, long before, very long before I was in any type of position to be helping other stepmoms improve their own step family relationships, I was right here in this situation where I would give and give and give to my husband, Seamus, he wasn't my husband that back then, uh, and to my stepson. So one Christmas, because I used to, I too used to, I too used to be a giver, uh, I decided that this Christmas I was going to take all of the pressure off Christmas shopping. I was going to take all the pressure off Seamus. I was going to take care of Christmas for everybody, right? I was going to shop for Seamus. I was going to shop for my stepson. I was also going to shop for my in-laws. And on top of that, I was going to shop for my own family. So here I am, and I'd tasked myself with this very large feat of handling Christmas for a lot of people. And for a lot of people, I didn't really know very well yet. 
So here I am. I've agreed, I've stepped up, I've stood up, I've raised my hand, I've volunteered to handle the shopping and the wrapping. And then in addition to that, coordinating all of the shipping of all of the presents to my husband's family. Um, Most of his family lives in Newfoundland. He also has family in BC. So if you're not familiar with Canada, Newfoundland is the farthest east province that we have. And BC is the farthest west province that we have. And we, my family, we don't live in any of those provinces. So I was quite literally buying, wrapping and shipping gifts for people that I didn't know very well from one side of the country to the other side of the country in order to handle Christmas, right? Like, don't worry, guys, I'll handle it. I got this. I'll handle it. And so we need Morgan Freeman's voice to come in and say, she was not, in fact, handling it. So here I am after investing, Lord only knows how much money and time and energy into shopping for the perfect gifts. And I should add at that time that my in-laws also didn't really know me all that well yet. So in my mind, I had something to prove. I had to prove to them that I wasn't anything like Seamus's ex-wife and that I was so much better and nicer and more thoughtful and more generous. So that was something that was underlying my motives for taking care of Christmas, for handling Christmas, right? And that part's important. So I'm going to say it again. And if you are not driving and you want to write it down, then I would recommend that you do write this down. Okay. So in my mind during that time, I had something to prove to my in-laws. My motive was not to selflessly give to others for Christmas. Not, Not even in the slightest. My motive was to prove that I was not like Seamus's ex-wife, that I was so much better and so much nicer and so much more thoughtful and so much more generous. And I also wanted to prove to Seamus that I was so much better and so much nicer and so much more thoughtful than his ex-wife. And in doing so, I really hoped that deep down inside, I would start to believe that I in fact was better and nicer and more thoughtful than the ex-wife. In my mind back then, everything was a comparison. Everything was a comparison. Am I a better cook than she was? Am I prettier than she was? Am I skinnier than she was? Am I funnier than she was? Do I make more money than she does? Do I have a better job than she does? Do I have a nicer vehicle than she does? How much better can I be than my husband's ex? That's one of the things I was trying to prove. Okay, competition. Also, needless to say, huge problem, but that is another story for another day. Okay, so here we are back in Christmas. Here I am trying to prove my worth to my in-laws and to Seamus, and I'm knee deep in Christmas presents and wrapping paper and bows. I have YouTube videos playing on my phone so that I can see how to wrap presents perfectly. So I'm wrapping and YouTubing and making, trying, really trying to make fancy cloth ribbon bows. And, you know, if this would have been characteristic of me before this, then not a big deal. Right? Like if I had always been someone who made a big deal of Christmas and went all out with wrapping and I did it because I enjoyed it and I got joy from giving to people, then it's no big deal, right? But in fact, at the time, at this time, I hated Christmas. I mean, for goodness sake, I didn't even know how to wrap. I hardly even knew how to wrap a present. Like I am the gift bag queen. I hardly knew how to wrap a present and here I am trapped in the freaking YouTube wormhole with all these videos playing of all these extravagant ways to wrap gifts so that I can impress my in-laws and impress Seamus. Okay. So fast forward, I invest countless hours of my life I get all of the presents packed up and shipped out to the West and all the presents shipped out to the East. 
and all my husband's presents wrapped and all my stepson's presents wrapped. And like, you get the picture, obviously. But during this time, after I shipped these parcels away, I was completely riddled with anxiety. You know, I'm wondering, is this going to be the thing that convinces my mother-in-law that I'm better than Seamus's ex? Is this going to be the thing that makes her love and accept me? Is my sister-in-law going to call me crying because she was so grateful that I had YouTubed for 10 hours how to tie a cloth bow around her gift? You know, is Seamus, who at the time was not even yet my fiance, is he going to drop down on one knee and immediately ask me to marry him because I'd done such an incredible job in the YouTube wormhole? Well, spoiler, spoiler alert, but no, none of those things happened. Anyway, a few days after I had shipped everything out, we got a package in the mail from my mother-in-law. Like I said, she lives in Newfoundland. So every Christmas, she sends a big parcel to Seamus that has all of his favorite things from back home that he can't get here where we live, you know, plus things like traditional stuff like a Christmas pudding and a bunch of other sweet little things that she sends. And in the parcel, she also sends everyone's gifts. So I'm unpacking this parcel because there are things that need to go in the fridge. And I'm pulling everyone's gifts out and I'm putting them under the tree, you know, one for Seamus, one for my stepson, another one for my stepson, pulling them out, sorting, et cetera, et cetera. And then I get nearly to the bottom of the box, you know, and I'm thinking my heart's like kind of getting heavy and I'm thinking, you know, one of these has got to be for me, right? Like they've got to know I'm here. They've got to have sent me a present. So I'm like starting to get kind of discouraged, like, Maybe they hate me. Maybe they're never going to accept me, right? Getting in my head, getting in my stories. So I go to pull out another gift to put under the tree and I pull it out and I go to look at the name tag to see who this one is for. And I'm really hoping by now, like this next one's got to be mine, right? So I go open the name tag and guess whose name was on the gift tag? The name on the gift tag was my husband's ex-wife's name. So if you feel like you just got punched in the gut from that story, then you are not alone. And you and I are probably very similar people. But what is this story have to do with you feeling unappreciated if you are a stepmom who does feel unappreciated. So one of the biggest mistakes that so many, so many stepmoms are making is believing that the reason they feel unappreciated, the reason they feel invisible the reason they don't feel like they belong is because other people are unable to see how worthy they are. That other people are unable to see how valuable they are. And maybe you can relate to this. You know, I feel invisible because my stepkids don't say hi, bye, please, thank you. I feel unappreciated because I just spent a week cleaning and redecorating the house and the kids trashed it in eight seconds and told me they liked it the way it looked before and told me their mom's house is nicer. I feel unappreciated because I poured a hundred hours and my heart and soul into these Christmas gifts and in return, I get my husband's ex-wife's Christmas gift dropped into my lap. And I mean, I get it. Like, trust me. I get it. I get why we think this way. Everyone tells women, since we're very small girls, that the way to be valuable, the way to be worthy, the way to be loved is to get married and have babies and take care of everyone else. So what a lot of women do is they spend a lifetime trying to do just that, right? Trying to find a husband. My mission in life is to find a husband. My mission in life is to have kids of my own. 
And if you're a person who, for many different reasons, doesn't necessarily want to get married, or for many different reasons, doesn't necessarily want to have bio kids or any kids or any kids, depending, or for many different reasons, maybe can't have bio kids then if your experience is like many other people I've met who have chosen a life outside of what the social expectation is for an air quote, normal family, then you might find yourself having to justify your choices to the, well, what do you mean you don't want to get married? Well, what do you mean you don't want to have your own kids? What do you mean you don't have your own kids? What do you mean you're gay type of people? who believe that the only way for women to be worthy is to be married to a man and have a bunch of kids running around. Also, disclaimer, I'm not shitting on people who get married and have kids. I am married and I do have a bio child. I'm just trying to shed some light on the massive, massive importance that our society places on women to fit inside of this social norm. And if you don't fit in this social norm, then society leads you to believe that there's something wrong with you right? That you're broken, that you're not worthy, that you're not valuable, that your worth has to be derived from being a wife and a mother. And if you are not those things, then you better well overcompensate. Okay. And so for some women, being a wife and being a mother is the greatest joy in their life. But for other women, and I'm looking at you, stepmom, because we fit outside of this social norm, because we were not first wives or first serious partners, because we are not the mother to our partner's children, then society leads us to believe that we have to prove our worth and our worthiness by acting as though we live in a normal family. By acting as though we are our stepkids' biological mother when we very much are not their mother. But let me ask you, does every woman who bleeds herself dry to take care of her partner and the kids actually end up feeling like she's valuable and appreciated and worthy? Does every stepmom who gives more and tries harder actually end up waking up one day and saying, wow, you know, I guess sacrificing my mental health and well-being for my partner and stepkids worked because magically somehow now they see me as one of the gang. No freaking way. Like if that actually worked, then why would the number one concern among stepmoms be that they feel unappreciated and invisible? The hard truth, the truth that people don't want to hear is that by continuing to give when you already feel unappreciated, you are, you are, you are, you are creating, creating an expectation. You are creating an expectation for everybody else that you're going to continue to do all of these things for them, regardless of how they're treating you. By continuing to give more, to try harder, you are literally rewarding your partner and your stepkids for ignoring everything that you're doing for them. And what ends up happening? You know, what are the consequences of this? If this is a theme in your life, if you are like a lot of stepmoms that I've met, you might start to question whether or not you're being too sensitive, right? How many times have you said to yourself, maybe I'm just making a big deal out of nothing? How many times have you actually tried to override or stuff down this huge red flag that your body is sending up to you, right? It's saying, hello, hello, don't red flag. It feels bad because it's not in alignment with who you are. And I'm convinced that this is why so many stem moms turn to numbing behaviors, you know, like downing a bottle of wine or crushing Netflix marathons like it's their job. Because that feeling becomes so uncomfortable that, and I mean, at least if you're anything like me, your body and your intuition are screaming at you, saying something feels bad, something feels wrong. So instead of changing the root cause of what feels bad, 
Most people reach to alcohol or drugs or food or Netflix or disappearing for a week while their stepkids are over to take the edge off, right? And now I'm also, I'm not here to pass judgment because trust me when I say that I've been there. Something I want you to keep in mind is that feeling bad is a symptom of a root cause problem. Feeling unappreciated is a symptom of a root cause problem. So it's really not a matter of feeling unappreciated. It's a matter of the fact that you are ignoring the cues from your body, like your emotions and your feelings and that little voice in your head that is saying, maybe screaming, this is not working. We have a problem here. Your body and your brain are smart and they are not going to stop sending those uncomfortable signals to you until you get rid of the root cause. And isn't it more important to you to get rid of the thing that makes you feel bad than it is to pretend everything is okay, to cover it up with stuff that numbs you from your reality. So when you continue to give and give to people who don't appreciate you, this is like pouring water into a bucket with a hole in the bottom. You will never, ever, ever, ever get that bucket filled up. So how do you actually start to get appreciation in your step family? How do you actually start to feel like your partner and your stepkids see you? That they see you and honor you and value you. That they respect your time. That they respect your energy and your efforts. I'm going to run you through, like I said at the beginning, I'm going to run you through the step queen steps. And I teach this method to my clients inside of the stepmom story. And if you are really serious about improving your step family life, not just sitting on the sidelines, but actually doing what it takes to improve your step family life, then you can go to bit.ly slash queen waitlist. That's bit, B-I-T dot L-Y slash queen waitlist. The link is also in the show notes and you're going to get some more details about what that looks like, okay? Because once you nail these steps, once you nail the steps method and, you know, not just enough to know them, but to be able to apply them in your life, then you're going to be able to maneuver out of this place, and end up settling into the type of role as a stepmom that feels genuine, that feels authentic, where you feel supported, where you feel appreciated. So if you have your pen and paper, this might be helpful to write down the steps and get a feel for what that looks like and try and run through this on your own. Try and apply the steps to something that's happening in your step family that you're like, what do I do? Okay, I'm going to stick to the unappreciated example to run through the steps with you, but the steps can be applied to every step family, every step family challenge. Okay. So the first S in steps stands for stories. And if you've never heard me speak about stories, then when this episode is finished, you can go back and listen to episode six. And this episode will really help you to dig deep into what your stories are and what is a story, okay? So when it comes to feeling unappreciated, the first thing that you want to do is to take a look at the stories that you're telling yourself. There are the facts and then there are the stories that you make up about those facts. I do it. I make up stories. Your partner does it. My partner does it. Your stepkids do it. My stepkids do it. Sally does it, right? Like every single person on this planet makes up stories from the facts. Our brains are wired for story. And stories are the way that our brains make things make sense to us. So a way to know whether you're telling yourself a story or you're looking at the facts is to ask yourself, is this a true fact that I'm unappreciated? 
would every single person that I know agree that I am unappreciated? And I can tell you right now, I appreciate you. Therefore, this is not a fact. Okay. This is a story. Next in the steps is T for thought management. So S stands for stories. T stands for thought management. So now what does this mean for you? Studies have shown that the human mind thinks between 12,000 and 60, 60, 60,000 thoughts per day. And of those thoughts, 80% are negative and up to 95% of your thoughts are the exact same thoughts that you had yesterday. So I want you to ask yourself the question, how long have I been thinking the thought that I am unappreciated? How many days in a row have I put the exact same set of thoughts on repeat through my head like a broken record? Loop, 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 saying over and over and over and over again the exact same things the exact same negative things about myself, about my stepfamily, about my spouse, about my spouse's ex, about my job, about my body, about my potential, right? And this is not raw, raw motivation, change your mindset, change your life, motivational talk, right? If you really, truly, honestly want to live in a stepfamily that you feel good living inside of, then you absolutely 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt will need to take a look at the types of things that you think. So the E in steps stands for emotional freedom. So like I've said many times, one of the coping mechanisms that I used to back in the day that I used to reach for when my stepson would come over was that I would down a bottle of wine in the bathtub. My emotions, what I felt inside of my body was so uncomfortable and I felt so powerless to change my situation that at the time, the only solution I could think of was to go and get numb. But there's a big difference between emotional freedom and emotional stuffing. So if, you know, when the kids don't say, hi, bye, please, thank you, your heart starts beating faster or you get shaky or you get butterflies in your stomach and not the good kind of butterflies, then you are having an emotional response to whatever is happening. And the only way to get freedom from that emotional response is to process it. Figure out what is this emotion telling me? Why am I feeling this way? When people go and stuff their feelings, and the the truth is that most people stuff their feelings. Most people do not manage their feelings, okay? Most people stuff them. Most people pretend their feelings and their emotions are not there. So when people go and stuff their feelings, the truth is that all of those bad feelings are still taking up space and living inside of them building up like garbage in a landfill. But human beings were given feelings and emotions for a reason. Listen to what those feelings are saying to you. Believe it or not, those feelings are on your team. Now the P in steps is probably one of my favorite And the P in steps stands for the practice of presence. So for the sake of time, uh, relevant to feeling unappreciated as a stepmom, one way to practice presence is to do something that brings you out of your head and into your heart. So for me, that looks like, you know, making a delicious cup of tea. For me, that looks like going outside in bare feet and feeling the earth, and smelling the air, and feeling the sun on my face. Presence is simple in theory, but it's difficult for very many people to reach, and it is a constant practice. 
And ultimately, presence where you want to be, where you want to try and reach for, even for one more second a day, presence is being able to live in the here, in the now, and not straddling your life with one foot in the past and one foot in the future. And the final S in steps stands for step family strategies. And I mean, you probably already know, most people already know that step families do not operate, do not function like first families do. We have a totally different playbook. There's totally different psychology behind it. There's totally different dynamics at play. So when you understand the actual step family dynamics that are contributing to the reason that you feel unappreciated, a few of those things, you know, being one that comes to mind is that you are not biologically related to your stepkids. So because, and that's not a judgment, that's just a fact, right? You're not biologically related to your stepkids. That's what makes you their stepmom. But because of that fact, because of that that lack of biological relationship, a lot of stepmoms will notice every time their stepkids don't say hi, bye, please, thank you, right? A biological parent, on the other hand, has way more tolerance for bad manners and bad behavior. So if you've ever wondered, you know, why does my partner not realize that his kids don't appreciate me? It's because they're probably treating you the same way that they treat your partner, right? And that's not a problem to your partner because your partner is related biologically, okay? And now another step family dynamic that's important to consider, especially in this unappreciated context, um, and forgive me as because the example that I'm going to be using is a traditional heterosexual husband and wife first family. Uh, But in a first family, mom and dad's relationship existed before any children were brought into the mix. So this means that mom and dad already had an established relationship before they were tasked with caring for a human being. Mom and dad already had history by the time that there was a kid put in the mix. In a step family, however, The kids and the parents, aka your partner and stepkids, had an established relationship before you came into the mix. So in a first family, mom and dad might say things to their kids like, you know, before you kids were born, me and your dad went backpacking in South America. But in a step family, dad and his kids might say things like, Before you came into our lives, we went to Disneyland as a family. And that hits different, right? Because it means a few things. It means you were not there for that experience. It means that their mother probably was. And then we're back to the first S in steps, the stories part. We go ahead and create a story about what that means that they took a trip to Disneyland. So as you can see... You know, the reason is one of the reasons it's so difficult for me to answer a question like, why do I feel unappreciated is because it's not a black and white cut and dry answer. It's not like asking someone, what is two plus two equal, right? Two plus two equals four. Why do I feel unappreciated as a stepmom? Well, there are a lot of reasons that you might feel unappreciated as a stepmom. But the good news is that the steps work so that you do not have to feel unappreciated. The good news is that the steps work so that you can work through the hard parts of a step family. Step families are hard. You know, step families are different. But once you get through that, once you apply those strategies, once you give yourself a break, once you realize how worthy of peace and happiness and appreciation that you actually are, then you won't give up until you find it. I wish that every single woman, every single stepmom would hear me when I say that you deserve 
you deserve an even better life. You deserve to wake up every day and not wonder how you're going to survive another encounter with insert person. You deserve to go outside and put your feet in the grass and feel joy just from touching the earth. You deserve that. You deserve that. So, like I said, if you want to learn more about the stepmom story, it is such, it's just, I love, I love the stepmom story. I love every single person inside of the stepmom story. It's my favorite thing in the whole entire world. If you are ready to take your step family to the next level, the stepmom story is the place to do it. You get to do these steps over and over and over and over again through everything that comes up. So you can go ahead and jump on the wait list to get more information at bit.ly slash queen waitlist bit.ly bit.ly slash queen waitlist. I hope to see you on the inside. I hope that this episode was helpful. I hope that you can practice running through the steps with a step family issue that comes up for you in the future. And if at any time you need to reach out, you need a little bit of advice, you need a, you need a cheerleader, you always, always, always can get me. The best place to get me is on Instagram. So if you don't already follow me, I am at the step queen. Send me a DM and let me know how you are doing. And I will see you back here next week. Same place, same time. I hope this episode got your wheels turning and showed you just how powerful you are. I would invite you to take 30 seconds and tap subscribe to this podcast. When you subscribe to the podcast, then rest assured you will never miss an episode. And in no time, spinning your wheels will be a thing of the past. Thank you for listening and subscribing. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the absolute world to me if after you subscribed, you jumped on over and left me a five-star review and better yet, a written review. I am on a mission to let every mom and stepmom know that you can create the life of your dreams. And I need your help to change the world. The world needs us. Thank you so much for subscribing and leaving me a five-star review. I will see you next week, same time, same place. For more behind the scenes action and to get really up close and personal with me and our beautiful step family, jump on over to Instagram and follow me at the step queen. Don't be shy. Send me a DM. Tag me in your posts. Tag me in your stories. Let me know what you're up to and what about the podcast has been blowing your mind. I cannot wait to get to know you better and Instagram is my jam. I love you so much. I love you so much. Make it rain, girlfriend. <laughs>